What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the station, Destination Devi. Glad you're here to talk with me, Ray G. Little dynasty, a little dynasty. We had some news pop off yesterday. Cam Newton is a New England Patriot. Training camps are still on schedule. And unfortunately, we don't know what's going to happen with the preseason. The Hall of Fame game was canceled. So we're still in this holding pattern on are we going to have football? Are we not going to have football? But either way, I'm going to make sure you're prepared for when the season eventually kicks off for your dynasty leagues. And we're going to talk a little redraft today. We're going to talk about some players who I would rather be a year early than a year too late. I hope you feel the same way. Watch the damn introduction before you comment and tell me how wrong I am on this segment. So at least give, give me five minutes to explain myself before we start going into the comments and, and, and talking about the show. But before that, let's have a word from the GOAT, Gus Johnson. You got barbecue back there and you didn't invite me. Hurt my feelings. It's interesting because the strategies that are required to win in seasonal leagues versus dynasty leagues are very, very different. And the players that we're going to talk about and discuss today, these are five players who very well may be on your championship contending roster. These are players who will most definitely help you win a fantasy championship in seasonal leagues in 2020. But Dynasty, the strategies required to win and to, to build powerhouse type team are vastly different than those that are required to win in seasonal leagues. It's, it's crazy because the sport in general is unpredictable. I don't care how much data you pull, how much film you watch, how much historical stuff you look at. The game of sport, the game of football is unpredictable and it doesn't matter what fantasy show you watch this one the ballers espn big names small names we are all essentially trying to do the same thing which is to predict an unpredictable future and we use as much information or some people use as little information as possible to provide an opinion on what's going to happen in the future and it's it's inherently, it's it's unpredictable. If you would have told me two years ago that Andrew Luck, Antonio Brown, Devonta Freeman would be out of the NFL, out of the NFL, I would have said you were absolutely crazy. Throw Luke Keekley in that for that matter. If you would have told me that Todd Gurley and David Johnson would no longer be focal points on the Cardinals or the Rams, I would have mortgaged my future and said there's no way that that's going to happen. Todd Gurley was coming off of would look like an MVP season to now, you know, being released and signed by the Atlanta Falcons. Devonta Freeman not in the league. Luke Keekley retired. Andrew Luck retired. Antonio Brown went batshit crazy. David Johnson fell off of a cliff. So things happen very, very fast in football. And in Dynasty, you have no choice but to think two, three, four years down the line. So when we're looking at players, uh, these five players today, these are players that I am okay with missing out on probably outstanding production in 2020 to serve my team well in the future. And that is what the dynasty game is. It is now and it's later, whereas seasonal leagues, these guys are no-brainers. Like, I want them on my roster. I want them to score fantasy points for me in 2020. So we're going to dive into that and kind of talk about these players. And the first guy that I want to talk about is Minnesota Vikings wide receiver Adam Thielen. And what I like so much about Adam Thielen and what a lot of people love is his underdog story. This guy literally came from nothing to something as a Minnesota State Mankato product uh, picked up by the Minnesota Vikings, undrafted free agent who had to claw his way from special teams. And then he found a small role on the offense and then eventually evolved into the featured number one wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. And he and Stefan Diggs were a fantastic pairing. They complemented each other very well. You've got the productive slot wide receiver in Adam Thielen. You've got the field stretching dynamic playmaker in Stefan Diggs with a quarterback this past season. Uh, and Kirk Cousins, who was able to deliver the ball accurately, we know that's what Kirk Cousins is. He's a an accurate timing thrower of the football, but in a low pass volume offense that wants to feature the run. You've got Dalvin Cook. I know he's got the contract situation. You have Alexander Madison, and then you have a, a dynamic tight end in Irv Smith. That pairing was looking fantastic. And what happens 
over the offseason, Stephon Diggs has traded the Buffalo Bills. So yes, Adam Thielen, the unquestioned alpha, the number one wide receiver in Minnesota. Well, not so fast. Minnesota spent first round draft capital on a very dynamic playmaker out of LSU, Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson has speed. He's got versatility. He can play inside and outside, but his specialty was inside in the slot. And None of us know what the hell Minnesota is going to do from an offensive scheme standpoint, but I would bet that they are not going to draft. They didn't draft a player with a particular skill set to put him outside of that conference. If I had to bet today, Justin Jefferson is going to assume that slot role. Adam Thielen will still play in the slot, but I would I think we can expect to see him playing on the outside more. And when you look at Adam Thielen's production, I mean, he really took off in 20 in 2016, 67, 69 receptions. Over 900 yards, five TDs, and then he breaks out in 2017, 142 targets, over 1,200 receiving yards, just looking dynamic. Follows that up with a 113 catch season in 2018, over 1,300 yards and nine TDs. He was fantastic. And then 2019 happens, and he only played in 10 games, dealt with some injuries, saw his production dip, 30 receptions, 418 yards, six touchdowns. And you have to remember, Adam Thielen is going to be playing this entire 2020 season. He's got a birthday in August, age 30. You've got an age 30 wide receiver who's competing with targets from a first-round pick, younger wide receiver, in a low-pass volume offense. Adam Thielen is somebody that it, I, I know we want to love him. And I think he's still going to be very effective for seasonal leagues in 2020. But beyond 2020, you're looking at a 31-year-old wide receiver who at that point in time is going to have to compete with a year two Justin Jefferson in the ascension of Irv Smith Jr. He is a player that I would sell right now and I'd be fine with missing out on that 2020 production a year too early versus a year too late. And when you're talking about players to sell, they've got to have some value. When you look at what Adam Thielen is, where he's going in dynasty startup drafts right now, according to DLF, he's got an ADP of 57 overall, and he's ahead, one spot ahead of his teammate, Justin Jefferson. He's being drafted ahead of Jalen Rager, Tyler Boyd, Jarvis Landry, Devontae Parker. In dynasty, I would take any of those guys over Adam Thielen because I want I know that those players barring some crazy injury or if they just give up on football I know that they're going to be primary targets for their team two three years from now whereas Adam Thielen I think he's going to still be a fine NFL player but he is not going to be a number one wide receiver for your fantasy team so while there's still value there again being drafted inside the top 60 players in startup drafts Go ahead and sell Adam Thielen. Be fine with missing out on the 2020 production. You'd rather be a year early on Adam Thielen than a year too late. Another player that can go, another player that we can move in dynasty leagues right now is San Francisco 49ers running back Raheem Mostert. Again, much like Adam Thielen, this underdog story of a player who has bounced around his entire NFL career. Let's just name the teams that Raheem Mostert played on. The Cleveland Browns, the Miami Dolphins, the Baltimore Ravens, the Chicago Bears, and then finally the San Francisco 49ers, where he had a breakout type season last year in limited duty. Started no games last year for the 49ers. They had Tevin Coleman, 131 carries, 772 yards, eight touchdowns, and then you can add in another 22 targets, 14 receptions, 180 yards, and two touchdowns for Raheem Mostert. And playing in an offense with Kyle Shanahan is desirable. We know that he is probably the best play caller in the NFL, scheming his players open when you've got George Kittle commanding the attention that he has. You've got an accurate thrower of the football, Jimmy Garoppolo. Debo Samuel, yes, foot injury investment in Brandon Ayuk on the outside. There are going to be running lanes for these running backs, and we know that Shanahan likes to rotate these running backs, but a 28-year-old running back who has never commanded a feature role in any offense that he's been a part of, that is a screaming sell. You got to get rid of Raheem Mostert now and be fine with missing out on his 2020 production, uh, opposed to trying to move him a year down the line going into his age 29 season for a player, again, who has never commanded a feature role on any offense. Tevin Coleman is still there. 
San Francisco, for whatever reason, still is holding on to Jarek McKinnon. Now, they let Matt Breida go. They've got a young running back in Jermichael Hasty, the rookie out of Baylor. Don't know what he's going to bring to the table, but you can bet your bottom dollar that Kyle Shanahan is going to find out. Now, what value does Mostert have? Why? Like, where where can we sell him? Is he actually going high? Well, according to DLF, he kind of is, all right? So he's got an overall ADP of 85. So he's a top 100 player in dynasty startup drafts. He's going ahead of players like Alexander Madison, Ronald Jones, Kerryon Johnson, Sony Michelle, Marlon Mack, and Zach Moss. Now, while those names don't sound particularly great, Ronald Jones is probably going to be the starting running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Showed well towards the end of last season. Alexander Madison is one of the top backup running backs in the NFL. And depending on what Dalvin Cook does, which I think he's going to play this season and not hold out any games. But Alexander Madison is a talented younger running back who's on an offense that wants to run the ball. Sony Michelle. I know we're, he's, he's one of those players the dynasty community really can't get behind. I really can't get behind him, but I can get behind the fact that now with Cam Newton there and the threat of a running quarterback mixed with, you know, uh, a, a runner in Sony Michelle and you still got James White and Rex Burkhead, you know, would you maybe in a seasonal league dynasty, I don't know how I feel about Sony Michelle, Marlon Mack, a young, talented runner replaced by Jonathan Taylor. Mack is still going to have a role, but he's a player that I can definitely see on a new team commanding a starters type workload at the running back position. So Raheem Mostert, 28 years old, top 100 player. This is the first season he's actually done anything substantial to warrant that high of an ADP. It has just risen skyrocket for Raheem Mostert and people who are buying into the Kyle Shanahan coach warship and how good of a play caller he is, you probably can extract some value for selling Raheem Mostert now, opposed to waiting until his age 29 season for running back and then trying to do it later. So Raheem Mostert, another guy that in seasonal leagues could help you win, could be a, a piece to your offense, not an RB1, maybe give you that weekly RB2, maybe give you an RB1 week here and there, but more so than not, he's a, a solid flex play or an RB3. Go ahead and get whatever value you can get for Raheem Mostert right now. Now let's move to the tight end position and talk about Philadelphia Eagles tight end Zach Ertz. And Zach Ertz has been a monster in PPR formats from the tight end position. He has been the model of consistency over the past couple of years. And with the Philadelphia Eagles commitment to wide receiver Jalen Rager to stretch the field, that not only helps out Carson Wentz, but that helps out, take some attention away from Zach Ertz, who has been the number one receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles over the past couple of years. But again, in Dynasty, you're looking at a player who's going to turn 30 years old this season. You're looking at a player who right next to him in his own tight end locker room, there's a younger probably more talented version of Zach Ertz in Dallas Goddard. And I know the Eagles gave Zach Ertz money. He is going to play. He's going to play well in 2020. But in 2021 and beyond, you're talking about a 30 turning 20, 31 year old tight end. We all know the tight end position is outside of the running back, extremely volatile, extremely fragile. But in PPR league, Zach Ertz is, has been fantastic. And when you look at his production over the past couple of years, 12 games in 2016, played in 13 games in 2017, the full slate 20, uh, in 2018, 16 games, and then in 2019, played in 15 games. Just listen to his target share over these years. In 2015, 112 targets, 106 targets, 110 targets. 2018, 156 targets. 2019, 135 targets. That's ridiculous. That is insane. So why the hell are we going to move Zach Ertz when he's been this model of consistency? Well, his age, Dallas Goddard, and let's look at some players, uh, according to DLF's uh, value chart, that are being drafted behind Zach Ertz, who have equally as much talent, if not more, and they're years younger than Ertz. We've got Darren Waller from the Las Vegas Raiders, Noah Fant, Hunter Henry, TJ Hawkinson, and right now, Zach Ertz is being drafted 38 spots ahead of his teammate, Dallas Goddard. In Dynasty, I would rather majority of those tight ends over Zach Ertz. Darren Waller would be the only one I'm a little iffy on. I still want to make sure that 
what we saw last year was more of what we're going to get consistently from Darren Waller and not an outlier season. We know they invested in Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards and Josh Jacobs maybe get more involved in the offense. So I still want to see Waller before I make the claim that I would take Waller ahead of Ertz. And Waller's, what, 27, 28 years old right now. But Ertz is a player with his ADP at 66 overall. So he's a top 70 player in Dynasty startup drafts. He's somebody I would be willing to miss out on this 2020 season's production to, to get rid of him and extract as much value as I can right now. Again, the tight end position is so fragile, man. Like it, it just, it, it changes so quickly. And there's another talented player right next to him. And if I'm Philadelphia, well, what do you do? Are, are, are they going to let Dallas Goddard walk? Absolutely not. They want that young stud wide, uh, tight end slash wide receiver in Dallas Goddard. So when these players switch teams, I'm not saying that they, they go into oblivion and they can't perform anymore, but it's, it's hard to envision a world unless he lands with, let's say, Tom Brady or Drew Brees or a quarterback like that, that is value going anywhere but down from here. I just, I don't see it. I think he is a phenomenal player. I want him in seasonal leagues. And if I have him in a dynasty league and I can't move him, then I'm fine riding that production. But right now, with his value being where it's at, with the consistent play that Zach Ertz has, has displayed over the past five years, right now, I'd, I'd rather be a year early on Zach Ertz than be a year too late. So throw some feelers out there and try to move Zach Ertz if you can right now. And those of you who are in tight end premium leagues, you probably have a better shot at moving him opposed to those of us who just play in traditional PPR formats or half point PPR. But Zach Ertz, player I'm fine with moving on from a year early versus a year too late. All right, now this pains me. This pains me because I have been a truther of this player since his rookie season in Arizona in 2015. And I'm talking about running back David Johnson of the Houston Texans. And this is this is a fascinating case study of what happens at the running back position. And this is why in Dynasty, I mean, it's 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 hard. Again, like I said in the introduction, we are trying to predict the unpredictable. We are trying to predict what's going to happen two or three years from now. But when you look at David Johnson and... I was on record at the beginning of last season saying sell, sell, sell the ideal of David Johnson with Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray in that offense. It's wheels up for DJ. And a lot of people thought that. And then we saw him fall off of a cliff in 2019. And we've all seen that sloth like run that just signaled shit. He's done. And I know he dealt with a lot of injuries, but that's sort of been the case with David Johnson throughout his career. Injury, injury, injury. And when we look at his statistics, it's it's kind of eye opening to see he's only had 1000 yard rushing season in his career. And that was in 2016, 293 carries. 1,239 yards and 16 rushing touchdowns to go along with 80 receptions on 120 targets. It was, he was about to be that thousand, thousand, thousand rushing, thousand uh, uh, receiving yard running back. Christian McCaffrey did it last year, but David Johnson in his second season blew the hell up and we were all over DJ. And then what happens in 2017? 2017 plays in one game, doesn't finish the games. Breaks his wrist out for the season. 2018, he comes back, and he had a decent fantasy finish because of the volume that he got, but, you know, sub-1,000 yards. He caught 50 He caught fifty passes for 446 yards, 10 touchdowns in total. So it was okay at the end, but the consistency week to week was just not there for DJ. And then in 2019, he only started nine games, played in 13, or was active for 13. He didn't really play in all 13 games. 94 carries, 345 yards, and two touchdowns. And, that, and then what really saved him last year was 36 receptions for 370 yards and four TDs. Gets traded the Houston Texans. They already have a below average offensive line. Deshaun Watson scrambles around for his life. You're devoid of DeAndre Hopkins. They didn't draft a wide receiver of consequence. You've got Will Fuller, who's an injury prone wide receiver on the outside. You bring in Brandon Cooks, who's an injury prone wide receiver on the outside. Volume. Volume is king. 
And in seasonal leagues, he's going to receive enough volume to be relevant. An RB2, maybe give you some RB1 weeks. DJ, this is the fantasy gods have gifted you with a second chance. I told you to sell him last year, but you've been given a gift. You've been given the gift of another opportunity to extract any value that you can get out of David Johnson right now in Dynasty. And I urge you to do it to take advantage right now, pause this show, and if you've got David Johnson, be trying to sell the hell out of him because I personally just, I think he's done. In his college career, he had over a 1,000 touches in college, and then he came into the NFL used and abused already. And you're talking about a running back who's going to finish this 2020 season at age 29, so next year will be his age 30 running back season, who has not been the model of consistency and health throughout his career, who's playing in an offense with a, a, a decent offensive line, with wide receivers that really can't stay healthy. I just, again, you've been given another opportunity to move David Johnson, and if you don't do it now, you will 100% be a year too late trying to sell him before the 2021 NFL season. You got to move DJ now. In seasonal leagues, again, you're looking at an RB2 based off of just volume alone. Who's behind him? Duke Johnson, we've been wanting that to happen for years. And after that, I don't even know what other running back they have on the roster. So, DJ, you've been given a gift. Take advantage of that gift and get rid of them right now. This is priority numero uno. Of the five players that we talk about today, this is the one you better sell as quickly as possible. And when you look at his ADP, he's being drafted as a top 75 player. He's 74 overall ahead of players like Darius Geis, Keyshawn Vaughn, Raheem Mostert. I mean, if, if, if I had to pick, I would take Geis and Raheem Mostert over David Johnson. I really don't want Mostert for the long term, and I'm still questionable on Darius Geis and his injury history, but at least he just turned 23 years old, so he's got a little more time to try to develop into that feature running back role. We all know Geis is talented. Keyshawn Vaughn, uh, that Tampa Bay backfield, I think his price is a little high. But at, at being drafted as a top 75 player overall, as a 29-year-old running back, or going to turn 29, you need to move him. You've been given a second chance. Go sell DJ. And the final player we are going to talk about today is arguably one of the best wide receivers of his generation. And we're talking about Julio Jones. Julio, 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 beast. I mean, what, what else, what else can we say? He is a beast. He is 100% going to help you win a fantasy championship in 2020. But when you're looking at Julio Jones is in totality, he's 31 years old. He's a 31 year old wide receiver who has dealt with some nagging injuries. He's never really missed a ton of time but he's one of those players that pops up on the injury report. Um, he's dealt with some foot injuries, hip flexors, shoulder sprains. He's a, he's a physical wide receiver. He's physical at Alabama. He's a physical wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. He's on an offense that features one of the best throwers in the game, Matt Ryan, uh, a, a very good complimentary receiver in Calvin Ridley. And then they've got an upgrade at the tight end position, at least athletically with Hayden Hurst, Todd Gurley in the backfield. Would it shock me at all if Julio Jones finishes the 2020 season first in receiving yards? No. 100-plus receptions? No. 10-plus touchdowns? None of that is shocking. But the fact of the matter is, in Dynasty, you're talking about next season, a wide receiver who's age 32, the value for Julio Jones will not go up. This is where it's at. At, at, at this point, and I know it pains you to hear this truth, his value is only going to decrease, and age matters. Age is not everything, but age means something. And that doesn't mean that at age 32, 33, Julio's not going to be a good wide receiver. But when you're talking about longevity, it's it's just not there. He's got less time in the game than he has more time in the game. And when you're talking about the value that he has today, Julio Jones is being drafted number 32 overall, ahead of players like Allen Robinson, his teammate Calvin Ridley, Cortland Sutton, DK Metcalf, Stephon Diggs, and rookie C.D. Lamb. I know it's a tough pill to swallow because he is probably going to trump all of these wide receivers as far as 2020 production, but in the long run, 
two years down the line, I want CeeDee Lamb. I want DK Metcalf. I want Calvin Ridley. I want Cortland Sutton. I want those players more than I want Julio Jones, and you should be thinking the same way. And it's hard. It's hard to wrap our minds around a player who just listened to his receiving yards over the past six years, 1,593 yards, 1,871 yards, 1,409 yards, 1,400 44 yards, 1,677 yards, and in 2019, 1,394 yards. And we're talking about a player, 163 targets, 203 targets, 148 targets, 157 targets. Julio Jones is a beast. He's a monster. And in his career, he's only had two seasons with sub-1,000 yard receiving yards. And one of those seasons, he only played five games. The other was his rookie yards, and he was damn near there. He had 959 receiving yards. As a rookie, he's a Hall of Fame wide receiver, one of the greatest wide receivers of this generation, but long-term extract that that 32. You know, he's being drafted as player 32. Extract that value from Julio Jones now. And this pill is the biggest one of them all to swallow because when you move him, you're going to have to watch him go off for whatever team you moved him to. But after this season, again, his value will only decrease. It's 32 ADP now. Next year, it's 45. And then it's 50. And then before you know it, we're not really talking about Julio Jones in the light that we're talking about him today. But that's the name of the game in Dynasty. And that's why in the introduction, I said the strategies required to build a dynasty and to win long term are completely different from those of the redraft strategy. And in seasonal leagues in 2020, Julio Jones is going to wreck your your opponent's dreams. He's that good. He's that talented. Hall of Fame caliber wide receiver. But me personally, and I hope you just hear me out, I would rather be a year too early on Julio Jones and get as much value. And I'm talking first round picks. You probably can get, you know, a DK Metcalf plus for Julio Jones, a Cortland Sutton plus for Julio Jones. I would take that deal, and you just got to eat that pill. You got to swallow it because he's going to blow up for your league mate that you trade him to. So David Johnson, Julio Jones, Adam Thielen, Raheem Mostert, Zach Ertz are five players that I would be actively trying to sell, and I'd be okay being a year early versus a year too late. A couple of players who didn't make the cut, A.J. Green, wide receiver of the Cincinnati Bengals. Love A.J. Green, the talent. He's a 30-plus-year-old wide receiver who is constantly hurt. They drafted T. Higgins to go with Joe Burrow. That is the future. A.J. Green, he's one of those players that will get traded next year, blow up in his age 32 season, and then fall off of a cliff. I mean, that's just how that's how this stuff works. T.Y. Hilton, a 30-year-old, five foot nine, field-stretching wide receiver, playing on the Indianapolis Colts with YOLO ball Phillip Rivers that drafted Jacob Eason. We don't know how that's going to play out. T.Y. Hilton is another guy that I'd be trying to move sooner rather than later. And then a younger guy would be Chris Carson. Chris Carson has been nothing but outstanding given the opportunity that he's had in Seattle. But he's another one of those physical, physical running backs. Claw is way out of oblivion. He ends up being the starter, back-to-back thousand-yard seasons. But Chris Carson is another one of those guys. I would rather be a year early than a year too late. So there are plenty of other players that we can talk about and discuss in the segment, but those are five and a couple of bonus players that I'm looking at moving in Dynasty Leagues. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Click the alerts. Got a lot of good stuff on the station, bringing you content, Debbie, Dynasty, Seasonal Leagues. We're kind of doing it all. If you want to get more exclusive access to me, check out the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash all gas. I've got my cornerstone rankings, Debbie rankings, all kinds of stuff. Best Debbie community in the game. If you want to join a campus to Canton league, if you want more information on incoming rookies, live stream film breakdowns with me, patreon.com forward slash all gas is where it's at. But I appreciate you guys tuning in today. We'll be back later this week with more content. Peace. Peace.